So you probably want to grind that Mirage and you're like, hmm, the SO8000 novel is on sale. Should I get this thing against an air spawn? It has six MG 151s. Should be pretty good, right? And I'm sorry to say that this plane is not very good. It's not good in the slightest. Yes, the air spawn is nice, but by the time you hit 3000 meters, your team will already be on level with you. And then you reach 4000, they'll be one to two kilometers above you. So the climb rate for one is completely abysmal. So is the acceleration, so is the turn rate. So getting these guns on target while you have 1500 rounds of 20 mil, it doesn't mean you can get those guns on target because the airframe of this plane is absolutely abysmal. Sure, it's very good at high speed. It doesn't really compress. The problem is you won't be going fast enough to ever use that because the climb rate as well as the acceleration is so abysmal that you really won't be flying at high speed at all. And the second problem is nowadays you fly against US teams and the US teams, well, they compress just as little and they do the rest better. Doras do basically everything better than you and they're a lower BR. So you really don't have many options when you're flying this thing. And sure, the guns make it nice so you can farm some bombers here and there. But even a bomber, if he just turns away, he will simply just outclimb you. Yes, it's actually that sad. And maybe it's good for grinding. Maybe it's good for simply throwing yourself in there, going head on with one, two guys, dying. And then doing it all over again. Because of course, going full commit head on with this thing, you have a lot of guns. You have a pretty powerful damage model. So you don't really get one shot a lot. But it doesn't make it any more enjoyable. I think you're much better off buying the Yak Tree. And then when you hit tier 4, you either want a Talisman, the 84 f 4 7 or the F8F1B. And all of these planes are not the best either. But at least they're going to be a lot better than this thing. And it's a much cheaper alternative as well. You can also buy the Vautour at rank 5. But the Vautour right now is probably one of the saddest premiums in the game. Because you're just going to get Missile. Yak 38, Harriers. SU-7s and everything in that BR will basically stomp you if it's not going to be an afterburning plane that goes twice your speed that starts licking up your bumhole it's going to be a missile finding your ass so and in all honesty the French grind was actually one of the worst I've ever experienced and back then the P-63 was tier 4 I flew the NC-900 which is basically a Focke Wolf on 90 A8 grind it up until the P-63 put a talisman on that thing and then I just started kind of flying all the jets and back then the jets weren't as painful as right now because well, there were no missiles. And going very slow in a jet all game is basically a dead sentence. Because going slow means a missile doesn't have to lead as much. And it will very easily just shoot you out of the air. And if you didn't know this yet, I'm just trying to push head-ons as much as I can. And I'm really not a fan of that. I really hate doing head-ons. But in this plane you're kind of forced to. Because if they get past the head-on, a lot of the times you will just die. And you're not going to be squirming your way out of it. Right here it's against a J7W as well as an AU-1. And have a lot more energy and if you have an energy advantage on someone this thing can actually be pretty good but the climb rate is so damn bad that what you have to do is basically side climb to 6000 7000 meters wait for the enemy to dive and then you can start boom and zooming them and even then if they don't really commit with you uh, they will out energy you in the long run regardless right now i start out the j7w he tried to pitch up for me i tried to stay out of his gun range i pitch back up he stalls out, I pitch back down. I try to get the shot with a flap and you can tell that my flap rips off and I start uncontrollably flopping around and it made me miss the shot in the AU-1 as well. Right now I have a lot of my energy in the AU-1 so I'm trying to finish this as fast as I can because if I don't kill him in one or two more turns he is going to out energy me and this is an attacker and really that is just the life of this plane and right here if I had missed this shot I'm going 320, he was probably going about 200 by the time I get my guns back on, because this thing turns so poorly, uh, he will have more energy than me. And he will be easily riding my 6 and I just simply die. And later on in this video I will show you a dogfight versus an uh, FU-4B. Yes, he completely messed it up. But you're going to see very clearly how big the difference is. And even the Focke-Wolf 90 A8, which I say is not a very good play. Sure, it has an air spawn, it has a lot of guns. It's kind of the same boat as this thing, but at least that thing is kind of snappy. And your guns go where you want them to go. With your flaps, you actually turn somewhat alright. This thing basically takes everything the 190A8 does well. And when I say well, it's in quotation marks. And it completely stomps that into the ground as well. It is not a very good plane. And at 5.0, I would rather fly the Focke Wolf 190A8 at 6.0 than this thing at 4.7. That's just how big the difference is. And it might be a little bit of an over exaggeration. Maybe it is. But this thing is just not very good. And you're really just at the mercy of the enemy when it comes to trying to carry it. But at this point I thought, well, maybe I can win this as a J7W, which is pretty similar in a 1v1. He's a little bit faster and he has a little bit better climb rate. 
but in terms of a dogfight you turn about the same and there's this p47 on my six which i'm not having much fun with he keeps breaking off he's playing pretty passive i can't really blame him he probably doesn't really know how this thing flies because you don't really see these a lot and he's in a p47 m he does now is what i thought was going to be the game winner but he didn't stick he didn't stick on the FU and he kept his altitude to go for me. And right now I'm just trying to put some speed into altitude. So I can you know, fight this guy on level ground. So I can maybe kill this dude. He breaks off finally again. I'm just trying to climb away. I'm trying to get some separation in. The FU7 instantly dies. And the P47 can start climbing again. If that P, if that FU had maybe survived for 20 more seconds. Slim chance I maybe could have won it. But he didn't. And now I get both of these guys sitting on my ass. And I don't really enjoy this. Because the P-47 is a plane that simply does everything better than me. And I'm not trying to camp the base here. But they're kind of pushing me into this direction. Because I, I have to go a certain direction to maximize the distance. As well as the, the energy that I can gain. Because it takes them longer to get to me. And that's why I'm not trying to hug it. I'm trying to kind of go in between them right now. Because I don't like winning by AA. Because if you win by AA I think you should have just lost anyway. And it's not very satisfying for me. And it's a big middle finger to the enemy team as well. So right now I'm just trying to climb. That's why I'm speeding this up. I'm just it's such a slow it's such a slow plane. And not even in terms of top speed, because the top speed is pretty respectable. It goes about 600 kph. But it's just not enough. It simply turns too bad. It doesn't have the energy retention. It doesn't have the climb rate. It doesn't have the acceleration. And you're just kind of a sitting duck. And this guy, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean with if you're flying a plane like this. You're kind of at the mercy of the enemy. And it depends on what they are going to do to you. I'm trying to pitch up in a P-47 here. He goes up over me. Which is a smart thing to do. I'm almost a kilometer away. It's a very hard shot. I'm almost stalled out. I can't get the shot in here. I'm simply, I don't have enough nose authority. I'm stalling out. I'm going 80 kph. He has all the speed in the world to just dodge my guns. And my aim is a little bit off. Because I'm not very much used to this plane yet. He sticks on me and I think at this point, okay, I can kill him right here. He's going to dogfight me, but no. He notices that he has more energy. He notices that he turns much, much better than me. And he's just going to put it into the vertical again. J7 is closing in at the distance. I have to kill him right here and if I don't, I will lose the game. So yes, I probably should have played this differently in retrospect. Because that's, but that's with the knowledge that I'm going to miss this shot. If I knew I wasn't going to hit this, if I knew he was going to do exactly that, I wouldn't have taken it, of course. But I have to kill him right here. There's too much at stake. I'm too low on tickets. They're going to ground pound. They're going to drop the tickets down. There's a J7W coming in. And there he is. And I simply can't do anything anymore. The P47 is going to dive on me as I'm diving away as well. I now get both of these guys on my 6. And this is done deal. And people ask me. Show you that. Show me how you die. Well these are the kind of deaths that I'm experiencing. I can't really do much here. It doesn't matter how much magic I pull out of my ass. I don't have magic. It's still a game. Not sure how that J7 hit me there. Because those shells came out sideways. But it doesn't matter. I had them both on my 6. I'm not going to reverse any of them. Because this plane is simply too bad for that. And as I say that. He is a K4. Right now we're going 750 kph. So I can actually turn quite well. The K4 can't go that fast. Because he will rip his wings off. So I made him do a horizontal turn to stick on me. I start to turn into him. I'm cutting into his loop because I'm so damn slow now. And look at my speed bleed. I'm only going 300 at this point. The K4 is going a lot faster. Can't really judge how much faster he is going. Because it's a very awkward angle. People ask me how do you read the enemy's energy. And that's simply just looking at the numbers. But at those kind of angles. It's kind of impossible to tell. So I'm not going to give you an estimate. D13. And look at this. He's out turning me in the spiral. He will completely out energy me. If he had gone horizontal I would have died. But what does he do? He pulls back into my guns and you should rewatch that because you saw that like I'm not pulling a lot and then suddenly my, my plane snaps. It snaps like 5 to 10 degrees, nose on. And that's my keyboard input because when you try to aim this thing with your mouse, well, bad news for you. It doesn't pull that much. You have to use this thing with the keyboard, especially at low speed. The star control is pretty good. That's actually the only redeeming factor of this thing. Well, next to the guns. But you can't rely on stall control when the enemy plays it right. If you don't go into stall fight to begin with, then what are you going to do? Not much. And here we go. Tower 152, it's a C3. I have a lot more energy than him. I could tell because when I was climbing away from him in a diagonal way. So he's cutting me off. Both in horizontal axis as well as the vertical one. And I was still outrunning him. 
which indicates that I have a lot more energy. And if you want to know how to do that, then I highly suggest you to check out the video I will put in the top right corner here, which is a pretty elaborate energy guide. And I also have some more examples after that one, which I'll link to the end of that video as well. But right now I'm starting out to 152. I'm not gonna go straight up because I have more energy. I don't have to. And the C3 is one of those planes that's almost as sad as this one. So I go horizontal. He stalls out. I pull back in. He tries to pull back up to me. And it's simply just not going to happen. He stalled out. Shoot once. Shoot twice. And that's a fireball. A little bit of a worse example. But it gives you an idea. And right now I'm going about 600 kph. You don't want to take the head on. You might have more energy. You might have better guns. But why risk it when you have so much energy that you can simply dodge his guns. Then come back down and kill him that way. Because this way you're going to get the kill. And you're actually going to survive. And surviving means you can get another kill. Well, not this case, because this is the last enemy, I already have 5 kills, but... You want to conserve your plane a little bit. Why go into a head-on, if you have all the energy to dodge it anyway, and then kill him 2 seconds later, without the repair cost. B-17, going fly, oh he's flying straight. I don't really have to tell you how to kill these. Just hold the trigger down, he'll die eventually. And now we pull back in, and I will show you how you have to fly this thing as a support plane. And then show you a little dogfight at the end with an FU-4B. And you will very easily tell uh, how much he's simply outperforming me. He made some pretty big mistakes, which is why I could survive that long. But in the end, because he made those mistakes, you can actually see how big the difference is. Going on with a Spitfire. And LF-9 is actually one of your most annoying enemies, as well as the stuff like the A7M. They're very nimble, they're hard to hit. And they have a climb rate that can get easily above you. Well, that's actually every plane. They have a good climb rate that can get easily get above you. And then when they dive on you, you have no chance of trying to reverse those guys. You might have good stall control. But he can literally just put your mouse cursor on you. And he will out turn you anyway. And if you haven't noticed yet, I'm really trying to just go head on with everyone. As I said earlier as well. Because you don't want people to get past your head on. The moment they get past your guns... It's basically game over unless you have a team around, which is what I want to focus on in this gameplay. Because that FU is now trying to outrun me. And when I say trying, he is definitely going to succeed because it's an FU 4B. So I'm going to turn into him. I don't want to make it a 1v1, so I want to pull this guy down. He goes up, which is fine with me. I'm going to see if I can try to pull in, but he keeps pulling up. If I try to pull into him, I will just stall myself below him. There's a teammate coming in. And in the event that the teammate actually doesn't kill him, I'm stalled below him. FU4B gets a very easy kill on me. And after I'm dead, he can 1v1 my teammate, which isn't something I'd like the idea of. And LA-9 isn't a very good plane either. There's a lot of sad planes in this BR, really. We'll fly the LA-9 relatively soon. as the LA-9, the J7W, the Ta 152C3. And all of these planes are just kind of sad. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Sure, they have decent guns, but they're pretty sad planes. And what I did there was I dove below the FU4B. And then I turn away, and if the FU4B thinks about following me, he gets the LA9 dead on the 6, and I bait him that way. And if he doesn't stick on me, I'm clear, and now I can kind of regain my energy. And while I get, regain some energy, I can start diving on the enemy again. But there's a lot of teammates in the area, as well as enemies, and a J7 trades with the LA9. Which is a trade I don't really mind, because the, the J7 is very similar to my plane, and I don't really like finding similar planes. The thing is... I kind of don't like fighting those FU-4Bs and the A7s just as much because they do things just so much better than me that I'm going to have a very tough time actually killing these guys. And the 3v1ing people, the beehiving as I call it, the sticking together and then attacking a single target which makes it so that it's a very, it's going to be very tough for me to get in there and get a single kill in because all of these guys are pointing the noses at me and if one of them dodges the head-on and I pick that guy to go head-on with the other guy next to him can get a free head on me because I don't have my guns on him while the other one can shoot me easily. It doesn't sound very great. At this point the A7M is coming into me. SO8000 number 2 coming in who's distracting him and at this point I can go head on with the FU4B. I start shooting at a pretty decent range. I see that he dodges so I try to pull back into the head on. I'm trying to spray into him and you can tell my nose authority just isn't there. It's such a pain to get guns on target in this thing. And that's just what kills this plane. If this thing turns a little bit better. And even if it bled more speed. If it just had that little bit more nose authority. This thing would actually be flyable. But it's such on, it's on rails. It doesn't pull AOA. It doesn't pull any Gs. And it just feels like you're kind of... It's simply like driving a, a train. You're on rails. You don't really go anywhere else other than the rails. Nothing happened there. I 
tabbed out and I was just looking forward and then I turned around and me turning around is what you see right here. So you didn't actually even see me looking around because I was, well, tabbed out. And I want to kill this FU before he kills my teammate because right now he's diving. I can maybe intercept the, him on the Dornier 235. With a little bit of luck he tries to maybe trouble drop him, try to stick on the 6. But the Dornier just flies straight. He doesn't move at all. And then the FU simply shoots him out of the air because of course he has the 4 a and trees. Here comes the FU, I have a little bit more energy than him. But I want you to look and pay attention to this. He's flying straight. Yeah, no, he wasn't going to do anything. He wasn't paying attention. This guy is actually going to do something. And that's one FU that... Very lucky he didn't pay attention. And now I have an N1K on my 6. That's actually catching me. And there's an FU 4B. And at this point... Like, the FU 4B is already painful enough. But the N1K is also... Well, it's a sad plane. An N1K that's catching you, especially in a plane like this, isn't very enjoyable. And because I had to dodge the N1K and I can't force a dogfight with him, I had to let the FU 4B on my 6 as well. For now, I'm not running him. He's a lot faster than me. I'm just trying to drain this N1K from ammo at this point because he's spraying so hard that he will run out of ammo very shortly here. Any minute now, he suddenly stopped spraying, which probably means he's low on ammo, so I'm going to fly straight a little bit more. Bait him into shooting that those last rounds off. And then when he breaks off, I'm going to be 1v1ing his FU 4B. And there you go, he's out of ammo. And the FU 4B, well sure I'm not running him for now. That thing goes about 70 kph faster than I am right now. Well, he's not at the moment, but he will, so he will just start catching me. So what do I do? I actually wait for him to start catching me. And you might ask, why do you not start turning right now while you have more energy? Then you go into the dogfight. And in that dogfight, the energy difference will be the biggest in my favor. And yes, you are right. But I want some distance, otherwise he starts directly on my 6. So I'm trying to maximize the amount of distance. And then the second he starts catching me, we're going at the exact same speed. And then I will start turn fighting. Because I don't want him to catch me on my 6. I want to outrun him. And then once the, the distance is maximum, I have more time to turn in. Maybe force a head on. Maybe force like a side aspect short so it's harder to hit. And here you will see... Just how much more energy this guy has. I tried to dive out because I thought he was going to go straight up. But he didn't. He was waiting for me to do something. So even though you have a plan that might work. If the enemy doesn't comply with your plan. You have to switch it up again. So you want to keep looking at your enemy. This time he did another 180. So now I will start putting in some distance. Just a little bit. I need to get some speed. And you can tell that this thing just does not accelerate. Trying to hide behind the trees a little bit. He hits one shell on me. And luckily this damage model is pretty tanky. But I want you to pay very close attention here to this, these turn rates. This stall control and this climb rate. Because right now I'm going 140 kph. I'm stalled out. I'm going horizontal. My nose is dripping over. And this guy continues to climb straight up. He's going faster than me now. With almost 300 meters in between us. Which is pretty huge. Because he also outturns me. And now he flies straight for a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. And then he pulls back into my guns. If he had just kept turning into me, he would have killed me probably. But he turned away from me. And it cost him the game. And I didn't show you that to show you how much better I am than that FU 4B. Or how easy it is to beat one. Because I should have died there. He even hit me. I just want to put it in there to show you what the difference really. And the FU 4B is at the same BR. And that's, in my opinion better guns. But that's a can of worms I don't want to open. Because it always invite some people to start having a political discussion in the comment section so i'm just not going to cover that anymore hope you all enjoyed it hope it was helpful and we'll see you all pretty soon again